हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज रुचि शर्मा फ्रॉम ईसी डिपार्टमेंट आर्य कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड आईटी जयपुर दिस इज लेक्चर योर वीविंग ऑफ एंटीना एंड प्रोपोगेशन सब्जेक्ट कोर्स सिक्स ईसी फोर जीरो फोर दिस इज आर टेंथ लेक्चर ऑफ यूनिट थर्ड एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू एड्रेस द टॉपिक्स हॉर्न एंटीनाज एंड फॉर द मोर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब the types of horn antennas and as well as we are going to study in detail e plane sectoral horn now students uh, uh, making you familiar about horn antennas i would like to make you a brief introduction like uh, uh, horn antennas uh, these are one of the simplest and probably the most widely used microwave antennas is uh, since 1930s right widely used as a feed element for large radio astronomy satellite tracking and communication dishes found installing throughout the world now feed for reflectors and lenses they are also used as so uh, when we talk about its geometry it is simple in construction easy to excite versatile large having large gain and preferred overall and it is a uh, antenna which we prefer for for its overall performance now uh, what does it look like a hollow pipe it is a hollow pipe basically of different cross sections the cross sections of the mouth opening can be of different shapes which has been tapered which has been flared to a large opening okay the opening should be large now uh, the type of flaring direction and amount of taper or flare can have a profound effect on the performance of the element as a radiator of the horn antenna students here you can see the typical electromagnetic horn antenna configurations you can add one more uh, configuration as a part e here that can be corrugated horn antennas which is not uh, uh, occurring in the basic types of antennas right uh, it is somewhat the more complex type of antenna which is used further for complex applications here we are discussing the basic types of horn antennas the first one a is the e plane horn antenna h plane horn antenna pyramidal and conical now what is the difference between e plane and h plane antenna is like when we talk about the dimensions the width is uh, d and the length is a of the waveguide which is the transmission line which is the transition point okay now when the uh, e fields are propagating along the b length like along the y direction then uh, when the then it is called as e plane antenna right when the e planes e, e uh, fields are existing along the b dimension here we you can see the b dimension here b dimension then along the y axis then it can be termed as e plane antenna and the direction in which the e, e fields are propagating and in that particular direction only we are uh, constructing the geometry of the horn antenna so therefore we will term it as e plane antenna and vice versa for the h plane antenna now pyramidal uh, when we give flaring as a shape of a pyramid then it will be termed as a pyramidal horn and for conical when a cone shaped wave uh, uh, transition to the wave guide is given to flare out it is it will be termed as conical antennas now for the um, in horn antenna the two key criteria to be satisfied for an antenna to be useful are first the input match should be done perfectly second the required radiation pattern characteristics must be obtained now it is a well known fact in transmission line theory that if the cross section of the transmission line is changed slowly the reflection coefficient produced by the discontinuity can be made small over a wide band of frequency additionally an additional advantage is that you can see here an additional advantage is that 
it is possible to approximate the field distribution at any cross section in the waveguide by knowing the field distribution in the waveguide at the input that is if we know the field distribution at the input then it becomes possible for us to determine the field radiated at the aperture which is the main goal of our in finding the aperture radiated field now when we considering the geometry of an e plane sectoral horn the, there are two diagrams a and b this is geometry of the e plane e plane sectoral horn and in this geometry uh, when we consider the 3d model first one is the 3d model okay and the and the e plane model is the second one b1 okay here you can students here you can see the two points uh, when looking at the uh, A and B, both the diagrams, you can see two points where the Y axis is coming out. One is Y at the transition point at the input terminal of the waveguide, uh, where the transition is taking place into the flaring. And the second one is at the opening, Y dash. And here in second diagram, two circles are formed. And in first diagram, two points are formed. These are the two points. Now, the point at the flaring, the point where the Y dash is uh, located it is the observation point here Y dash Z dash and X dash are the primed coordinates prime coordinates are what the coordinates of the observation point of, uh, at which the radiated field is to be analyzed and the second one is at the um, transition point of the waveguide uh, the it is the unprimed coordinates okay the reference point sorry uh, it is the transition point uh, now after considering the geometry uh, I will make you familiar the with two things first of all we are going to study about the design method uh, design concepts also that how it is what are the factors what are the parameters which are necessary for its design see here in the in both of the diagrams you will see two things okay in the second diagram in, in the e plane view here uh, del is written uh, here is dash lines at the flaring this is the imaginary flaring line okay now and del is located over there del is uh, marked over there with the y dash axis we have to find we have to find two main things for the design of the horn antennas first is del y dash and the second one is this you can see the apex angle psi e see psi e we have to find this two these two things psi e can be twice then only we can find the whole apex angle twice the, uh, psi e and del y dash we have to find in order to um, uh, create the uh, design of a horn e sectoral horn antenna okay here rho e is the total distance from the uh, input uh, from the origin to the reference point rho e okay and here rho 1 is the distance between the in, uh, input point to the reference point to the observation point rho 1 and in later on in the designing concepts we'll see how this rho e rho 1 is interconnected to interrelated to each other by which formula okay uh, now now the fields at the aperture of the horn can be found by treating the horn as a radial waveguide now the fields within the horn can be expressed in terms of cylindrical te and tm wave functions which include hankel functions now uh, here for understanding horn antennas you must be able to recall your microwave engineering uh, concepts of waveguide okay now uh, modes and you should be very clear about modes uh, that uh, which TE and TM modes are only going to exist for the waveguide and why TEM mode is not going to exist and all in, in order to make your basics clear uh, now um, this method finds no, uh, now the field within the horn can be explained in terms of cylindrical TE and TM wave functions which include Hankel functions now this method finds the fields not only at the aperture of the horn but also within the horn now it can be shown that if fields of the wave, uh, feed waveguide are those of its dominant TE10 mode, the two conditions are there. Fields of the feed waveguide are those of its dominant TE10 mode and 
horn length is large compared to the aperture dimensions the lowest order mode fees at the aperture of the horn are given by this equation here we can see that the antenna is placed in which uh, which plane why is that plane okay now you should be now at the stage very clear about that uh, among the e and h field co components which are going to exist and which are not going to exist so here we are considering e plane sectoral horn so uh, here the e plane is going uh, the e field is going to exist along the y plane uh, along the y axis therefore the e z equals to here you can see e dash z equals to e dash x equal to y dash uh, h dash y equal to should be zero okay now what are the fields that are going to exist e dash y h dash z and h dash x which are given by the equations 13 uh, 1b 13 1c 1d okay now uh, you don't need to get confused over how these equations emerge and all these are the same now if you're uh, only going to consider the part other than e to the power minus j k k y dash square uh, divide by 2 rho 1 uh, when you separate this part from this uh, uh, other part uh, uh, j e 1 pi upon k a meta sine pi upon a x dash this is nothing but this is the expression similar to the field of a t e 1 0 mode for a rectangular waveguide with aperture dimension of a and b 1 okay where b1 should be greater than a now where b what is the difference between b and b1 is that uh, look over the other the second diagram we have considered b1 by 2 and um, at the flaring side okay uh, right now uh, i was going to tell you about the relation between rho 1 and rho e is given by the equation 13 1 e rho 1 is equals to rho e cos psi e now here we are going uh, we are getting both the uh, components like rho distance between the uh, observation point to the reference point rho 1 rho e and the apex angle psi e now where here where e1 is constant and the expressions are similar to the fields of a TE10 mode, okay, as I have earlier told of the rectangular wave guide. The only difference is the complex exponential term which is used here to represent a quadratic phase variation of the fields over the aperture of the horn. Now, what we are going to find exactly when we are considering this diagram, at the aperture side, we are going to find the quadrature phase variation of the fields over the aperture of the horn and what does this uh, these exponential components show it uh, shows the uh, quadratic phase variations of the fields over the aperture of the horn now here the flare angle psi e can be calculated as yes here the flare angle psi e can be calculated as psi e equals to 10 inverse of b1 by 2 uh, divided by rho 1 this can be calculated okay now um, uh, when we look at the second figure let us assume that at the imaginary apex of the horn there exists a linear source radiating cylindrical waves okay as the wave travel in the output radial the constant phase fronts are cylindrical in nature and at any point y dash at the aperture of the horn the phase of the fields will not be as same as it was at the origin y dash equals to zero now the phase is different because the wave has traveled different distances from the apex to the aperture now the difference in path of the travel designated as del y dash which I have told you earlier that there are two terms which we are going to find which is second one is del y dash it is going to tell us the difference in path of travel of the fields now for n any point y dash we can have the equation from this uh, diagram that for any point for any at any point y dash uh, whole bracket rho 1 plus del y dash whole square 
is equal to rho 1 square plus y dash whole square or we can write it further as a 13 to a equation which is referred to as a spherical phase term using the binomial ex expansion and retaining only the first two terms of it equation uh, 13 to a reduces to uh, 13 to b and when equation 2b is multiplied by the phase factor k the result is identical to the quadratic phase term in the equation 1b to 1d uh, 13.1 8 13.1 uh, 13.1 b to 1 13.1 d uh, this is one numerical and this is the type of numerical which you are going to face in your examination uh, like uh, related to the design of e plane sectoral horn design an e plane sectoral horn so that the maximum phase deviation at the aperture of the horn is this the dimensions of the horn are given and you have to apply the formula uh, k, uh, k multiplied by del y dash where y dash is equal to b1 by 2 you have to find the values from the given parameters and uh, this is one example so that you can be familiar with the type of design related numericals